Good afternoon. Today's topic. Heartbreak awareness. What are you pretending not to know? Before I jump into that, let me introduce myself and give you some more background. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I help strong, successful women find balance in love and life and business. And I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And every day, every day, I do, <laughs> I do these talks called messages from, the, messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And today's is number 417. Um, yeah. And the topic today is heartbreak awareness. What are you pretending not to know? And I actually stole that second part of the title from a seminar I took years ago. There's a big banner across the front of the, front of the room, and it's been used in many seminars. Like, what are you pretending not to know is a wake-up call to become aware of what we've been lying to ourselves about or numbing out to things, all these different things. So I'm applying this to heartbreak awareness, hence the title, to suggest some things to you and maybe give you some insight, some next steps, and some, um, what's I looking for? Awareness? No, more than that. Transformation you can do. That's a good word, transformation. So, let's get into this, shall we? And thank you for joining me as always, by the way. And if you're watching me live, you're watching me on Facebook, because if you're watching me on YouTube, that's a replay. And if you're listening to my podcast, that's also a replay. So just so you know. So, today's topic is really about the awareness that people don't have when their heart gets broken. If you're like me and many other people, I should say, as you're, if you were like me years ago, is that sending callous? I don't think so. Or, <laughs> or other people out in the world. When you go through a heartbreak, it's painful. And that is definitely true. I'm not going to deny that one for myself. But what also I notice for a lot of people is there's this, um, I won't say denial, but avoidance of facing the pain. Yes, people, and not understandably too, you know, if something hurts, you want to avoid getting hurt again. So you're going to do things to numb it out, or to suppress it, or to... Get over it as quickly as possible. Because if the pain hurts, it's going to be uncomfortable. And for most people, being uncomfortable isn't something they want to do. In fact, for most people, if something happens that makes them uncomfortable, they'll move, they'll change, they'll get out of the way, they'll do something different to avoid and avert repeating that experience. Totally understandable. This is the human condition, or the human way of doing things. You know, we as people tend to like to be comfortable. That's kind of like what we do. We live in comfort zones, and I can get to all topic about comfort zones, but and I might do that, we'll see what happens. However, the pain of heartbreak, the pain of going through a breakup that hurts deeply, is actually part of the awakening and the awareness that's possible to have. So rather than going down the traditional, in quotes, path of drowning your sorrows in booze, drugs, um, Netflix, uh, more sex, or whatever it is you do to transform your, direct, your, transform your numbness into something fun at least, or try to raise the, the pits of despair to tolerability. <laughs> I'm being facetious in a way, but the reality is this is what people do. And many people, many people, will put their heart in a padded cell of, in, of insulation to protect it. And I'm using interesting metaphors because that's what's coming through, so trust me, these are not things I plan on saying, they're just what's coming up. But what they're pretending not to know, and I'll drop this one in there, because this is the big piece of this. What, what people are pretending not to know when they numb out their pain and suppress their heart and hold it in, is that they were wounded. And what they're also pretending not to know is that they can actually repair it. And in fact, they could get help to repair it, which I'll get to later on, planting seeds ahead of time. So rather than doing that, they're going to go ahead and numb it out and pretend and pretend it doesn't hurt. Or at least numb it out so much they don't feel the hurt, which is probably more accurate. And I spoke about this a while ago, and in fact, I talked directly about this um, when I heard her speak, God, eight months ago, nine months ago? I listened to a talk by Barbara DeAngelis, who's one of the old school love and relationships teachers from way back. She was 
married to John Gray way back at the beginning before they split up and they did their own books and she did Making Love Work whilst he did Men from Mars, Women from Venus. So she's pretty big in this in arena teaching this too. And she talks about something in a talk I was at months and months ago, when she said that if you go through, or when you go, if, when you go through heartbreak and your heart is wounded or hurt, there's this tendency to freeze it up in a way. To, as she, used, she used the term, really freezing it up. Like imagining as if you were, if your heart and the love you could express was like the ocean. So you have this amount of love and expression, which is pretty large, to express and share in the world. But when you get hurt or wounded in a relationship, you tend to, rather than, actually, no, let me do tend to first. You tend to cover up that ocean with blocks of ice, metaphorically speaking. You're actually um, hiding the wounds, covering them up, so you don't get hurt again, which is understandable reflex, as I mentioned. What's happening, though, as you do that, is more and more of the ocean is being covered by ice, which means the love inside of you has less room to get out. And then when your relationship, what you're loving with is 50%, 30% of the love you're capable of. That's not very um, fulfilling to you or your new partner because the love you have inside of you is much greater than that, but you're not able to express it because you've blocked it up by the scar tissue, which is not even scar tissue, but the layers of protection, the padded cell you put around your heart to keep it safe. I've got to tell you something. If you want a really amazing relationship, Keeping your heart safe that way isn't the right way. There's another way of doing it. I'll get to that in a second too. The truth is, your heart's got to be open. You've got to be. You've got to be. You've got to be willing. Yes, you've got to be willing to be vulnerable to really have an amazing relationship. If you don't let your heart open to love, to receive and give love fully, and expressing it like a open vessel, then you're blocking the flow of love you can express, that you can receive, that you can enjoy, that you can be embraced by and in. Isn't that what you really want? To be that basking in that, in that infinite ocean of love? I mean, if you want to be in a healthy relationship, that sounds like a good thing to have for me. That's my viewpoint anyway. So if it is for you too, listen on long as I give you some ideas. If you don't care about that stuff, you just want to just have sex and don't have any emotion, emotional connection, then you can probably get stop now. But if you do that, you're not one of my clients or one of my friends anyway, because, well, I wouldn't say friends. <laughs> the people who understand me, you'll know that I go deeper than this. So. Let me add a couple of pieces to this right now. First of all, first of all, that, um, I'll say this another way, that icing up of your ocean, using that metaphor I used earlier, is in fact a very um, important place to review, to look at, to really be, um, Free to love, you gotta be free to love. I mean, it sounds so ridiculous to say it that way, but that's what I mean. And if you got your ocean of love, as the metaphor was going, full up with ice, you're not free to love. So the action you need to take is either dissolve, um, remove, or br disrupt, break up that ice you have on the ocean. There are ways of doing this, of course, and I'll get to that in a second. But I wanna make sure you get this understanding is that it's your own freedom you're enabling here. And I said before about what the heartbreak um, awareness is the first part to becoming aware of what you do know, instead of pretending not to know. I'm attempting to convert the title back again. But what you're pretending not to know is that you actually can, one, you can heal, two, you can love more than you've been loving, and also you're pretending not to know that you deserve love, because the other part. When you get wounded in relationships, or you get wounded after bad relationships, there's a great tendency to feel like you don't deserve better anymore. We are bad practitioners of self-love at times, where we don't know if we can actually own up to love, express love, have love, enjoy love. And when it comes to the, um, let's sit all the way, the childhood part, which I haven't tried to touch into yet, we get wired up, programmed, installed with beliefs about ourselves when we're kids that can carry over to our adult lives. So if you didn't have a childhood where you were loved enthusiastically, openly, fully by those around you, whether it's siblings, parents, friends, whatever it was, as an adult you may not know if you deserve it or not. Again, that limitation of what you've been told, which is not the truth, but you pretend not to know it. Because the reality is, we all know deep down inside, we do, that we deserve love. 
we may suppress it with other lies and things that are not true, but the reality is we all deserve love. And we all deserve to express love. So having said that, moving back into the piece about the icing, the ice that's covering everything up, one of the ways that you can remove or evaporate that ice, so to speak, is from the inside out. So speaking to this point of view of the um, limitation of what you can express loving through because you've blocked it with that icing, that ice flow, so to speak, that, that Barbara talks about, one of the ways is you dissolve it by warming up your own internal self metaphorically speaking. Self-love, self-healing, self-appreciation, self-support, self-acceptance, self-forgiveness, all these different self-tools are powerful ways to open up your heart to love. Because the biggest part of the work is loving yourself. When you love yourself, you start to stop, you start to melt the ice in that metaphor. What you also stop doing is listening to this as much. The power of self-love is to bring you from here down to here, which is where the real healing happens. Because when you're pretending not to know, it's this up here that's creating beliefs, rules, distractions, lies, that stop you knowing the truth that your heart is where the power lives. And that's where the real magic happens. That's where the real joy expresses itself. So my invitation to you, first of all, is to find ways where you can love yourself and accept yourself and forgive yourself more than you've done in the past. Because there's always more. There's always more in this case. And by so doing, you actually become more um, aligned to your heart, more in integrity, which I, I sort, of, sort of put head and heart in alignment. That's kind of one of my ways of looking at integrity. And you become more vulnerable, which means you can be more exposed. Now, before you get scared, the vulnerability that I'm talking about is one of being transparent. So I've just, I've just went a different direction because I was thinking of, I went to the Ant-Man's Wasp movie, so I was thinking about Ghost. If you haven't seen the movie, don't worry about it. There's a character in the, there's a character in the movie that basically can, um, is tra can be transparent so that nothing hurts her in that place. So in the sense of being transparent in this context <laughs> is that when you are not, because the only way people can really hurt you is when you take things personally and you believe what they're saying. So if you don't have those hooks inside for that to catch on to, what anybody else says or does doesn't hurt you, and you don't take it personally. So self-love, self-support is to erase and remove and disappear those hooks inside that are actually attaching to limiting beliefs and rules that you want to mirror on the outside. That's another part. I'm giving you like five things here, I'm realizing not all together, but these are all parts of the work that I do. The second piece, is that second, third, fourth? I'm, I've lost track. <laughs> Once you've got to a place where you do love yourself, thank you for the love and hearts, I appreciate that. Once you get to the place of loving and supporting yourself and really becoming transparent and, and integrity with who you are, the quality of your relationships will change. This is one of the secrets, by the way. The ability for you to love yourself, the more you love yourself, the more you trust yourself, the more you become whole and aligned with who you are, then the more that your standards will rise. And this is one of the benefits and the side effects of doing this. Because again, if you were raised in a family where loving wasn't expressed very much, or you felt you weren't appreciated, or you would maybe maybe you were told lies that you, would, you weren't enough, or you weren't right, or whatever that was. As an adult, those hooks from there will still happen. Thank you, Jim. Yes, truth indeed. But the reality is, you can transform them. And the thing is, again, from that abuse, hurt, distress, not feeling worthy enough when you were a kid, your daily choice as an adult won't be that great, because you won't believe you deserve the best. You won't believe you're worthy of that love, that um, expression. So by doing the self-love, the self-support, the self-healing self inside, to really own and respect yourself will raise your ability to attract a healthy relationship. This is a game changer for many people. So if you haven't realized this before, realize it now. Self-love, self-approval, self-care, self-forgiveness, self-appreciation, all these different processes, aspects, things you do with yourself, with yourself, yeah, will raise your own standards. They will transform your way to attract a healthy relationship. I was with a, also the, some friends on Saturday. Sorry, the, the, a friend of mine who's, who's a, we have a good time, we're, we're good friends, but she's like, 
she wants to say, you need to go and get a relationship, you need to get in a relationship. And she's like, her, her standards are different from mine, just to be clear. And it was more about, you need to get it now versus find the right one. And I'm a passionate devotee of finding the right one. So I'm patient. And yes, I've been single for a long time, but I'm not saying it from the point of view of going, I'm better than, it's more about, I know what I'm valuable. I know I'm valuable enough to deserve the best, and I know you are too. And this is the thing I want to make sure you get, is that the quicker you jump into a relationship, the more you want to examine what your choices have been. Because it's tempting for some people to jump into a relationship after the last one ended. Partly to, again, numb out that pain from the past relationship, and two, because I don't know if they deserve any better than that. And as I mentioned in this broadcast, in this teaching, in this, in this download, you can, by doing that inner work, raise your standards to attract a much healthier relationship and a more authentic relationship that you truly deserve, because you do deserve it. So, things I suggested you can do, I do offer support in that area if you want help with it. If you're not sure how to do it yourself, please reach out to me. But the thing is, it's your own choice to love yourself. So the homework I'm going to give you, I've given many times before, so I'll give you this one now. It's the five minute in the morning, five minute evening homework. It's very easy to do. But if you're ready to take on this journey, start taking that, to, re to raise your own standards, to do this for yourself, here's how you can do part of that very easily. And as I've told I've told this before, I've said it on summits, I've used it so many times, because it's still true. Is if you look in the mirror and look in your own eyes, and you say to yourself, authentically, honestly, from your heart, into the mirror, into your own eyes, and say, I love you, so that you feel it inside. And you do that for five minutes in the mirror, in the morning, in the evening. Do that every day for 30 days, for longer. Watch how things change, because your life will change in more ways than you can imagine, not just in relationship, but every area. Because once you start recognizing your value, once you start owning who you really are, once you start appreciating how amazing you really are, because you are, the sooner your life will start to reflect that back to you. I think you get my point. So, that's your homework. Yes, take that one on and try that on for size for a few weeks, see what happens. Um, with that, this is my um, this is my 417th Facebook Live. Do this every day. Um, I invite you to actually, let me say this, before I tell you the other parts. If you haven't watched me live and you're watching this replay, or if you know anybody who watches and want to have them watch me live, know I go live at 5 p.m. Pacific time every day. So if you know any friends who want to catch this stuff and you think they should get benefit from my work, want to interact with me directly, have them watch me live at 5 o'clock. You can share, them, share this in the replay, of course. And speaking of replays, this video will be on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. It's on my personal page, but I post other stuff as well. My business page is more specific towards the my broadcasts. You can also watch it on YouTube if you're a YouTube fan. Um, my, my, my channel there is Barry Selby. My uh, playlist is Messages from the Masculine. And as I mentioned before, it's also now going to be on iTunes. I have my podcast on iTunes called Messages from the Masculine. You can search for it there. And... Uh, and thank you, Gina, for the for the love and support. Um, this is why I'm talking to people, because on Facebook Live I can interact, where if you watch it on YouTube, you won't see the comments, and on iTunes, you won't see a thing. But if you're driving around, you want to listen to my broadcast, and want to do it without to take your eyes off the road, my podcast is an ideal way. Plus, you can listen to my broadcast back to back. Um, right now, there's only about 30 up there. I've got to get busy and get some more up there, because this is 417. I'm way ahead on videos than I am on my audios. Um, with that, I think that's it. Thank you for watching, as always. Thanks for being with me. Again, if you need help, reach out, message me. Um, go to my website, sign up for a discovery session. That's my gift to you. It says, it says, let's chat. You find it on my website. And let me know I can help you. You deserve the best. So stop pretending that you don't. Do I coach men or women more? Um, Gina, I coach women more because women listen, men don't as much. Just to be totally transparent. Um, I coach either if they want to do the work. That's the truth. But more women reach out than men do. So that's why that happens that way. Um, there's a completion in there somewhere. I'll be back in tomorrow. Number 400 and I'll see you at the Saban. When you're back in there. Yes, you will see me at the Saban. I was there yesterday and we'll start going next week. So yes, I look forward to seeing you again. And, we, and we'll catch up sometime too. Outside of the Saban. <laughs> um, that's it, I think. Yeah, tomorrow will be 418. We'll see what topic comes up. So, um, 
yeah, take care of yourselves, as always. And again, do the self-love work. It is worth it. It is 10 minutes a day, and it can change your life. How about that? <laughs> and it's free. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.